So last time, we ended up speaking about pi or electricity. And this material parameter is undeniably uh, coupled with its thermodynamic considerations of the, of the material. The reason is this. When we have a piezoelectric material, it's actually a certain phase of the material. And so piezoelectric material is not piezoelectric at all temperatures and all pressures. But there's a certain phase of the material which is piezoelectric. So let's take this example in this diagram of spontaneous polarization versus temperature. So a piezoelectric material beneath a certain temperature or in a certain temperature window we can understand is piezoelectric. So let's assume a, a material is piezoelectric here which would mean its spontaneous polarization is what here? It's positive or it's finite. But after a certain temperature there is no spontaneous polarization. And the trend is that as we get closer to this temperature, uh, this, this Curie temperature or the chain or the phase transition temperature where we go from polar to nonpolar, when we make this change, uh, we are decreasing in our polarization. This is called a second order material where we hit a um, discontin discontinuity of the polarization. So our first order, when we hit a discontinuity of the polarization at the Curie temperature, if it smoothly changes to zero at the uh, transition temperature, then we have a what is called a second order transition material. Not that important right now. So as we change our temp uh, temperature, we're changing our polarization in the piezoelectric or pyroelectric range. So and there's a slope here, as you see. So this slope is going to uh, actually determine this p uh, pyroelectric coefficient. So what's the equation now? P delta T equals change in polarization. So basically the change in polarization or the change in temperature is going to be this pyroelectric coefficient which then has units of coulombs per meter squared which is a unit of polarization and divided by Kelvin for the temperature. So this is the units of the pyroelectric coefficient. And uh, let's sort of understand now how we can utilize this to calculate the charge. So if we have a piezoelectric or pyroelectric material, yani just like a, a material which exhibits uh, a spontaneous dipole, a net spontaneous dipole. Remember for piezoelectric materials that you just make, they don't have a net dipole, although there are spontaneous polarizations uh, occurring in the material, you have to pull the material. So in order to pull the material such that the polarization vector is pointing downward, when we're pulling we have to apply negative or a negative positive charge on the tail of the arrow and negative charge on um, a negative uh, voltage on the bottom uh, which produces an electric field like this and the and the and the spontaneous polarization uh, it aligns or net polarization in this case for a bulk material uh, it aligns like that so if we change the temperature what's going to happen to a material any material the lattice constants change and because the spontaneous polarization in a piezoelectric material, or pyroelectric material, is coupled with the lattice constants, because it's, it really physically relates, you know, uh, a, ch a change in distance of the materials themselves, of, of the atoms themselves to each other, because it relates to change in distance, it's obviously going to change the polarization. So we can understand if the center of positive charge and center of negative charge is here at a certain temperature, uh, and if they become closer together or farther apart, um, this will definitely change the spontaneous polarization. So, uh, when we calculate this value, we will assume, okay, we have a certain change in temperature. I'm going to say, call that change in temperature 1. So the pyroelectric coefficient times the change in temperature 1 equals the change in polarization. Simple enough, but what does the change in polarization actually mean? Change in polarization, polarization is basically the change in charge over the change in area. And the reason why we're using changes and we're not using 
uh, the absolute value. So we're not saying the pyrotric coefficient times the absolute value of the temperature equals the uh, po uh, equals the uh, polarization is because you can actually eliminate all the polarization. So if we have a material where we heat it up, let's say, and has charges, you know, and we short the system, keeping it at the same temperature, and we short the circuit, and then we'll have no charges in the end. So really, uh, this change in spontaneous polarization, this is what's going to affect the change in charges, because the charges are not dependent on the initial state. So we have the right the change in charge of the change in area. Sorry, not the change in area. The area is constant. And when we're talking about area. We're talking about this uh, top surface and bottom surface of the material. So that's something we know. So the change in area of the change in charge uh, temperature equals the change in polarization. Sorry, the change in charge. A little messing it up there. Or if we had no charges to begin with, we would just say it's the charge. Or we could say the change in charge if we have uh, charges there already. For example, if we uh, apply an electric field and we didn't short circuit the system. So, how can we use it? So now we know how to calculate charge. So how do you calculate the voltage from charge? Let's see how much volts, volt, how many volts are across this material. So we all know from the simple equation, Q equals C V, and we know that the capacitance is equal to the permittivity. So you see now how the permittivity is going to play in uh, to this example, and that's times area divided by thickness. And uh, electric uh, voltage is uh, uh, equal to the electric field times the thickness. So we see this thickness canceling out. So the charge is equal to the permittivity times the area times the electric field, or rather it probably would have been easier just to leave it in terms of, a, of a voltage. So we can come up with the equation voltage. And then we, we, we saw earlier that uh, the Q was this PA delta T. Therefore, replacing that one The A's cancel out and we end up with this equation the piezoelectric charge coefficient times the thickness divided by Primitivity and we saw the thickness is the area here is a cancel out because the, the voltage is not depending on the area but it's depending on the thickness. So if you want a larger voltage, you should use a less lot of thickness. Or a lower permittivity material as well. If you want a large voltage, low permittivity, high thickness, high piezoelectric or pyroelectric coefficient. So as you can see here, this can be used as a piezoelectric sensor. Or sorry, a pyroelectric sensor where we change the temperature and we can tell it. But unfortunately, as I mentioned, the same way that piezoelectric materials are not good for DC sensing. And the reason is because uh, there's some charge leakage. So if you press on a piezoelectric material with a static force, you're going to get some charges. But that's going to leak through this internal resistance of the material, which is fairly high. But if you want some accuracy, uh, especially over time, uh, this charge leakage will be significant. Therefore, you use the AC uh AC, use the material in the AC conditions where the charges are repeatedly, repeatedly being generated. So therefore the air issue of leakage is not important. So in the same way, and you can refer to the previous lectures for that information, um, I believe it's in the practical considerations or practical or calculations of piezoelectric materials uh, with uh, piezoelectrics as sensors. That's where I discussed it. So. Uh, we will continue and quickly uh, examine one uh, application of pyroelectricity as a heat sensor, and that's in infrared cameras. Basically what happens, we have a heat source, let's call it a light bulb for now. Because light is also sort of like, it emits infrared radiation, or we have, let's say, a person, and he's giving off infrared light, 
or light bulb going I'm giving off some light and then we have a pyroelectric material positioned here this light or infrared radiation is going to hit the material and it's going to heat up the material based due to the energy which is in this light so this energy is going to heat up the material and it heats it up according to the uh, specific heat of the material so we can tell that a material with a low specific heat is going to absorb energy rather it's going to increase its temperature very quickly and therefore it may be good as a sensitive uh, inference or temp sensitive temperature sensor but we're not going to consider that right now we're just consider that some change in T happened so as I mentioned uh, we don't have uh, it's not good for DC sensing so if the change in temperature was like this let's call this time let's call this temperature and it, uh, we, you know, we have some change in temperature and it just stays constant. We're going to get some leakage current occurring through uh, this material, and therefore um, it won't be good. Uh, we'll, we'll get, the temperature we're going to measure is going to be like it's going to go up and it's going to go down as a leakage current happens. So therefore, we would like to utilize this uh, device in a uh, AC type of configuration, and the way we do that is this. So this light is coming in. And we actually install a shutter right here. We install we install a light shutter which opens and closes and uh, it lets light through or doesn't let it through, and therefore we get something like this. This is the light intensity. I'll call that L I for easy understanding because of the shutter. Therefore. The temperature seen in the material is going to be like this. It's going to ramp up and it's going to go down. It's going to ramp up and it's going to go down. Ramp up and go down. So it's obviously going to go increase with the light and it's going to decrease when the light's not there. And therefore, the charge in the material, as you change the temperature, the charge in the material will be similar to this. And therefore, what we're going to do, we're not going to measure the charge necessarily, we're going to measure the current, Q divided by T, or the derivative of the charge, rather, with respect to time, which will be like this. And you notice these sharp turns, and this is because the derivative is very high here, it's almost because the light intensity immediately turns on, the, the temperature is increasing very rapidly, the, just the charge is increasing very rapidly, thus the... Uh, change in charge versus change in time uh, is going to be quite rapid at that point and quite large and discontinuous sort of so we see this so we can measure this and by measuring this type of change in charge over change in time um, this is how we get uh, our measurements in, 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 in the presence of these leakage currents which are occurring okay this uh, wraps up my summary uh, Again, remember that this, this, uh, a lot of other factors play into pyroelectric materials because we're dealing with temperature. Because the specific heat uh, it plays in a lot, and the absorbance of light, how the pyroelectric material absorbs light, uh, that is also included. So there's a lot of optics involved, obviously, as I mentioned, infrared cameras, lenses, optics, uh, blocking out certain frequencies of light, uh, you know, along some. Uh, wavelengths of light to pass and be absorbed and therefore designing a nice uh, piezoelectric a pyroelectric infrared camera transducer okay thank you for watching uh, we'll continue our discussion of thermodynamics in the next lecture